You want to throw some prayer stones to unseat the wicked. Prayer stones to unseat the wicked. Plenty of prayers to pray in a few minutes. So you need to concentrate. And immediately you hear me, you begin to pray. Can you say this loud and clear? Oh God, Allah! Dissolve the power of the wicked. Assigned against my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Let the Lord dissolve their power. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. Say every program of the wicked to finish my life. Backfire in the name of Jesus. There is somebody here who needs to pray this loud and clear. That's right. Masente Kayabo Shandarabo Santa. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, waste us. Assign against my life. Hear the word of the Lord. Waste yourselves. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? That's right. In the name of Jesus, command the wasters to waste themselves. Jesus, then we pray. The next three prayers, they are specially vomited by the Holy Ghost to meet some specific needs in the midst right now. And so it is dangerous to keep quiet. Coven register. Containing my name. Catch fire! In the name of Jesus. Search the cover register ablaze in the name of Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Jesus' name we pray. That's good. Every wicked hole dug for me. Can I hear all the sisters here shouting this? Let the brother's voice sound like fire. Let everybody shout it loud and clear. Catch your digger! In the name of Jesus. It's up there already. Jesus, then we pray. Say the jaw and the backbone of the wicked assigned against me. Can I hear somebody shouting this? Let your voice be louder than that. Let your voice still be louder than that. Break my fire! In the name of Jesus. 
Brady John the backbone. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Right now, Holy Ghost, open our understanding. Lay your hands upon us. Help us to work a good warfare. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. amen. Let's have a say God bless you. Two weeks ago, we started a series of studies. 70 rules of spiritual warfare. And we want to continue from that place today. Those of you who were not here the first two times, I suggest to buy the tape. Good for you to study this yourself and know these 70 rules by yourself and apply them to your daily life. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So there is a command to fight. There is a command that we cannot hold our hands and watch. There is a command that we should not be spectators. There is a command that we should not allow the enemy to take the initiative. It says fight. Fight the good fight of faith. In the same First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So we began to go into the rules of spiritual war. We talk about know your God, know yourself, know your enemies, know the battleground, know how to retire and how to fight. And last week we stopped at number 33. I start from 34 today. Rule 34 for victory in spiritual warfare. Rule 34 says stick to Resources that strengthen you. Stick to resources that strengthen you. Those things you do spiritually that increases your fire, stick to it. It's a rule of spiritual war. Rule number 35 that always keep yourself in position that puts your enemy at a disadvantage. Always keep yourself in a position that puts the enemy at a disadvantage. That is, the way you position yourself to is important. Do not position your body, your soul, and your spirit in a position that gives the enemy an advantage. That's true number 35. 36. You must learn how to assess the strength of your enemy. Learn how to assess the strength of your enemy. This is where your Bible reading comes in. Where listening to the Holy Spirit comes in. Where meditation comes in. Learn how to assess the strength of your enemy. 37. Understand the strategy of retreat from bad situations. Understand that strategy by which you retreat from bad situations. That is a time to go a little bit aside and replan your strategy. And you must understand how to do that. There is a time to take cover. That's a time to take over. 
If you try to take cover while he's about to take cover, you get into trouble. That was what Moses did. He tried to take cover. Why don't you take cover? And that drove him into the wilderness. Number 38. Quench your internal battles. Quench your internal battles. Because if battles are raging within you, and you have not quietened that inner battle, you have not quietened it by the word of God, by prayer, by confession, by praising God, you are a loser if you start an outside battle. So the peace within is very important for you can fight successfully the enemy outside. Many of us are looking for the enemies outside. But really the real enemy is already inside. The Bible says, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Strangers shall surrender themselves to me. The strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. I'm praying for somebody here today. The internal strangers that are confusing you on the inside, I bind them and I cast them out. In the name of Jesus. Number 39. Fight courageously and fight desperately. Fight courageously, fight desperately. There is a department in heaven for the desperate. Those desperate people, they bombard heavens. When desperation starts, progress begins. I pray that somebody will cry a desperate cry here today. And your heaven shall stand at attention. <laughs> fight courageously. Fight desperately. 40. When the battle is hard, keep pressing on. When the battle is hard, keep pressing on. Never give up. 41. Rule 41. Always move rapidly and miss no opportunity. Always move rapidly and miss no opportunity. The reason for this is because you can never tell when a jackpot will fall from heaven. So, all facilities provided by the house of God for you, take hold of the facilities. If they say there is Bible study, take advantage of it. There is revival power, take advantage. There is study of the word of God, question and answer, take advantage. There is prayer meeting, take advantage of it. Miss no opportunity. Because the day that you miss may be the day you should never miss. 42. Attack the enemy's cooperation and communications. Attack the cooperation and communication of the enemy. That you can do by prayer. By binding and jamming their communication system with the fire of God. So that they can't cooperate against you. I pray that every evil cooperation against the destiny of anyone here shall be scattered to pieces in the name of Jesus. 43. Keep your warfare strategies and plans secret. Keep your warfare strategies and plans secret. Secret. That is, there are things not to say. There are things not to declare publicly as it will aid your opponent. A lot of people use our own mouth to broadcast our own miracles and blessings and all kinds of things to the enemies. And the enemy comes to attack us. Good morning, good morning. How are you? How are you? And that's all the person wants to know. I say, uh, excuse me, ma. Did I tell you that uh, my two children just got scholarship? You should congratulate me. They did not ask you. There are things to say. There are things not to say. 44. Always attack by fire. Attack by fire. 
Because God is the God that answered it by fire. 45. Exploit every opportunity that will arise. All opportunities. Use it. If you have a book for prayer, use it. If you have the gift of prophecy, use it. 46. Rule number 46. Establish a powerful secret intelligence system. Establish a, a powerful secret intelligence system. All governments of the world they spend money to train spies, to train intelligence agents to gather information. But we have a greater spy in the person of the Holy Spirit. That spy of the Holy Spirit was what was at work when the king of Syria said, ah, who tells our information to the king of Israel? And somebody said, no, nobody. That is Elisha. Elisha will tell him what is happening inside your bedroom. That's why Paul says we should pray that God should give us revelation knowledge. I pray that the power of open eyes to expose the past of the oppressor, the eyes that can see with inside the hole in the wall, that you will receive that now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Rule number 47. Good information is essential to success in warfare. Good information. Highly essential to success. Read the books. Listen to messages. Buy tapes. Buy CDs. Improve yourself. Gather information. 48. Rule number 48. Learn how to carry out circular attacks. Circular attacks. That is, you analyze all the areas of the enemy and attack the enemies in all areas. He has priests, attack the priests. He has a mobile system, attack the mobile system. He has the evil people he consult, attack the consultants. Carry out circular attacks. So you envelop the enemy from all areas. 49. Fight step upon step and precept upon precept. Let your fight be step upon step and precept upon precept. Many of us make mistakes. We gather too many prayers together at once and we start to pray them. Rather, write down your battles. Take them one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. All those general things don't work. One by one. Perhaps you have come from a home where there is trouble and there is all kinds of problems now. The foundational warfare should be waged separately. The one that is domestic witchcraft will be waged separately. The one from envious witchcraft should be waged separately. Line upon lines, step upon step, precept upon precept. 50. Rule number 50. Do not compare, complain, or contrast, but focus on the battle. Don't compare your life to another life. Don't complain about your destiny. Don't do compare and contrast. Focus on the battle. 51. Ensure adequate word level. Meditate on scriptures. Memorize scriptures. Gather scriptures that are relevant to your case and memorize them. And begin to say those words. And as you say them and say them and say them and say them, very soon they become part and parcel of you. And if anybody wages war to you in the spirit realm, you silence them immediately. 52. Put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. In Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I read from verse 13. Or well, let's read from verse 12, which you know so well. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So wherefore, because of this battle, say so wherefore, take 
unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your legs get about with the truth. Armor number one, truth. And having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereby you shall be able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Then finally, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That's the old armor of God. Old armor of God. Truth. Righteousness. Gospel of peace. Faith. Salvation. Word of God. Prayer. The old armor of God. 53. Rule 53 for victory in spiritual warfare. Always follow the principle of Operation Push. Operation Push is pray until something happens. Push. Pray until something happens. 54. Always get a word from the Lord about your battle. Get a word from the Lord for your battle. Don't just start fighting without any word from the Lord. 55. A disarmed soldier is a weak and usually defeated nation. Once the soldiers are disarmed, weak and usually defeated nation will follow. That is, once the enemy takes away your weapon, the battle is over. I pray that the enemy will not capture your weapons. <laughs> Let your amen be loud and clear. 56. We must direct angels into our battle by issuing revelation decrees given by the Holy Ghost. We must direct angels into our battles by issuing revelation decrees as given by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, angels are heir of salvation and they are ministers. The angels are ministers to those of us who are heir of salvation. 57. Be sure of your salvation. Be sure. Because if you are not saved, be a casualty in this war. 58. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't just seek for one baptism of the Holy Ghost and that is it. Get various baptisms. Various baptisms. After that initial one, get more. 59. Ensure that you are not in possession of any material from the enemy. Ensure that you are not in possession of any material from the enemy. Because anything that belongs to the enemy in your hand will invite the enemies to you. Like it is said in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 26. That you must not take an accosting unto yourself. 60. You have the power to cause the enemy to destroy themselves by sponsoring their civil war. You have the power to cause your enemy to destroy themselves by sponsoring civil war amongst them. That's happened so many times in scripture. The enemies fight it out and destroy themselves. And I'm praying for somebody here. All those stubborn enemies arranged against you. They shall destroy themselves. They shall destroy themselves. In the name of Jesus. 61. As Christians, we have a great captain who has never lost a battle. As Christians, we have a great captain who has never lost a battle. So that means that if you plug yourself to that captain, your victory is assured. 63. 62. Your level of commitment to the things of God determines your success in a battle. Your level of commitment to the things of God determines your success in the battle of life. Because God will not allow the, the 
apple of his eye to be disgraced. 63. The fruit of the spirit in your life makes you untouchable. The fruit of the spirit as written in Galatians will make you untouchable. 64. A fearful heart is already a casualty. A fearful heart is already a casualty in the battle. 65. There is no conscription in the army of the Lord. There is no conscription. They won't force you to be there. You will decide, I want to be in the battle. And I want to fight. 66. Your confidence must be in the Lord alone. Don't mix other things. Your confidence must be in the Lord alone. 67. Proceed on all battles under the anointing. Proceed on all battles under the anointing. It's a rule of warfare. Proceed on all battles under the anointing. Because it's by the anointing the yoke will be broken. 68. Show no mercy for all repentant enemies. Because if you show mercy, the mercy will backfire. Please understand this warfare principle. 69. There must be no surrender and no retirement in the battle. No retirement, no surrender, no retirement in the battle. And last but not the least, number 70, in the school of warfare, connect yourself to his resurrection power. Connect yourself to his resurrection power. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That power that raised Jesus up from the dead. Connect yourself to it. So even if you are injured in that battle, connect yourself to his resurrection power and things will change. Here in beloveds are the 70 rules of spiritual warfare. Thereby bringing this teaching to a close. We are now going to pray. And the kind of prayers we are going to pray are the kind of prayers that unseats the wicked from their throne which we started praying before this message started. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. Make sure that nobody's voice is louder than yours as you make this bold declaration. My life shall not accept defeat. Can I hear you saying that loud and clear? In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The next prayer should be prayed three times. And it will be dangerous to keep quiet. Say, blood! Jesus, wipe away arrows of wickedness in my family. Can I hear you shouting this word? There is somebody who needs to shout this loud. Jesus, wipe away the arrows of wickedness. Makatenda ya boshentera basanta ya ba losanda. In 
Jesus name we pray. Open your mouth and pray the second time. Let them be wiped away. Arrows of wickedness. In Jesus' name we pray. This is the third time I put in your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, wipe it away by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your right hand to the heavenlies. Father, these hands that are raised up to the heavenlies, let the sanitizing power of the Holy Ghost, let the medication power of the Holy Ghost, let the deliverance power of the Holy Ghost fall upon these hands now. In the name of Jesus. Now lay the hands on your head. Now louder than anyone here. Please, anything can happen now. We are at a different realm now. So, do not of darkness in my life backfire in the name of Jesus the bullet is coming out Continue, continue, continue. Aha! In Jesus' name we pray. Leave that hand on the head, beloved. And let there be silence. That which you have just decreed in your mouth. Father, let there be manifestation of these arrows going back to the ascenders. <laughs> just keep that hand on your head and be quiet before the Lord. While these arrows have been taken out and sent back to the senders. The arrows in the head, the eyes, the chest, the breast, the legs, the womb. The backbone. Let's wait and see what is happening now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.